Hello and welcome to Crop Science 6049. In today's lesson, we are going to look at pollination mechanisms and fertilization in plants. By the end of this lesson, you must be able to describe pollination mechanisms in plants and explain the concepts of double fertilization in plants. So let's take a look at pollination. Pollination is the transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma. Plants can either self-pollinate or cross-pollinate. Self-pollination is the transfer of pollen grains from an anther to the stigma of the same flower or flowers on the same plant. Self-pollination may include autogamy, where pollen moves to the female parts of the same flower, or getnogamy, when pollen is transferred to another flower on the same plant. Self-pollination leads to self-fertilization. Self-pollination is an advantage of greater reliability, where members of the species are uncommon and are separated by large distances. This is because it's not dependent on an external factor such as wind to deliver pollen. It is also useful in harsh conditions. Cross-pollination is the transfer of pollen grains from the anther of one plant to the stigma of another plant. Plants that cannot fertilize themselves are called self-sterile, a condition which mandates cross-pollination for the production of offspring. Cross-pollination leads to cross-fertilization and has an advantage of increasing the amount of genetic variation. It is a form of outbreeding. Now let's take a look at pollination methods. Pollination method number one is abiotic pollination. And this is a pollination method that is brought about by non-living things. This is the pollination that is not caused by living things, but by water or wind. Water pollination is limited to aquatic plants. Pollen travels from one flower to another on or below the water surface, depending on the plant. In wind pollinated species, the pollen is dispersed by air currents from the anthers to the stigma. Biotic pollination is a pollination that is caused by living things. Plants have found various ways of attracting these living things or animal species to their flowers to aid pollination, for example, visual attraction or odorous attraction. Now let's take a look at mechanisms that promote cross-pollination or outcrossing in plants. First of all, we have monoecy or we have monoecious plants. Monoecious plants have separate male sexual part, that is the stamen, and the female part on two separate flowers in order to eliminate intrafloral pollination and favor outcrossing. In monoecy, both male and female flowers are on the same hermaphrodite plants. In many cucurbits, for example, pumpkins, squash, watermelons, and gods, the unpollinated pistillate flower looks like a miniature fruit with, an, with attached petals. In maize, a monoecious plant has are found in the tassel, a male inflorescent. The tassel emerges upward from the terminal portion or tip of the stem. Flowers are found on a modified lateral shoot, consisting of an ear enclosed in a protective cast. Consequently, maize is about 95% cross-pollinated and only 5% self-pollinated. Next, we have dioecy or dioecious plants. Dioecious plants have individual plants bearing either staminate or pistillate flowers to ensure cross-pordination. In gynodioecy, some individual plants bear pistillate flowers exclusively, while others have perfect flowers. So in this case of gynodioecy, a plant will have only the female plant. In Androdioecy, some plants have staminate flowers only, while others have perfect flowers. So in Androdioecy, 
a plant will have only the male part. While others may have a flower that is both male and female parts. In triosi, for example, in papaya or purple, there are three variants. One individual plant may have staminate flowers only, some with pistillate flowers only, and others with perfect flowers. Next, we have dichogamy. In dichogamy, the stamen and the pistil mature at different periods, and there are two main types of dichogamy, which are protandry and protogeny. In protandry, the stamens or anthers develop first, and the pollen grains mature and are shed before pistils or stigma become mature and receptive. This type of pollination occurs in plants related to sunflower and carrots. In protogeny, such as in some members of the chenopods and avocado, the pistils or stigma mature ahead of the stamen or anther. Now let's take a look at chasmogamy. Chasmogamy is the production of flowers that open so as to expose the reproductive organs to allow cross-pollination. The stigma becomes receptive and pollination occurs when the flower opens. The opening of flower exposes the stigma to pollen from other flowers. Now let's take a look at echogamy. This is the spatial separation of the male and female sexual organs within a flower. There are two types of echogamy. First of all, we have approach echogamy. This is the presentation of the stigma above the level of the anthers. This arrangement of sexual organs causes floral visitors to first contact the stigma before removing pollen from the anthers. This form of echogamy is considered to be common. Next, we have reverse echogamy. Reverse echogamy is displayed when the stigma is recessed below the level of the anthers. This arrangement causes floral visitors to first contact the anthers before the stigma. For this reason, reverse echogamy is believed to facilitate greater pollen export than approach echogamy. Next, we have self-sterility or self-incompatibility. Self-sterility is the inability of a plant to form functional gametes or sexual structures, while self-incompatibility is a common condition in which fertilization fails to occur between gametes from the same individual. So self-sterility is, is whereby a plant is not able to form gametes that are functional. In that plant, we have to rely on gametes from other plants in order to fertilize its uh, ovule. And self-incompatibility is whereby a plant produces gametes that are functional, but they are not able to fertilize the ovule of that plant. And the gametes that flower or that plant produces can only fertilize ovules from other plants. And itself, it also needs gametes from other plants in order to, for fertilization to take place. In both cases, self-pollination does not form a seed. Thus, seeds that are formed necessarily arise from cross-pollination. Now, let's take a look at the mechanisms in plants that promote self-pollination. Mechanism number one is the perfect flower. A perfect flower is a flower that has both male and female sexual parts in the same flower. If pollen shedding and stigma receptivity are synchronized and mechanisms promoting flower-to-flower -flower pollen transfer are absent, intrafloral pollen transfer will be ensured. So if we have a perfect flower and the stigma is able to receive pollen grains when the pollen grains mature and also when mechanisms that promote flower-to-flower -flower transfer are absent, that flower can self-pollinate. Next, we have homogamy. The male and female sexual parts mature at the same time. That is, the pollen is shed at the same time that the stigma becomes receptive. In plants having perfect flowers, this favors intrafloral self-pollination. 
Next we have Cleistogamy. Cleistogamy is the opposite of Chasmogamy. This is a plant mechanism whereby pollination and fertilization occur in an unopened flower or just before opening. Cleistogamous flowers are common in beans and peas. Now let's take a look at fertilization in plants. Plant fertilization is the union of a male and female gamete to produce a zygote. Once the pollen grain has landed on a compatible species, it will germinate. So it has to be a compatible species. A pollen tube emerges from one of the pores in the walls of the pollen grain and grows rapidly down the style to the offer. Its growth is controlled by the pollen tube nucleus, which is also known as the vegetative nucleus, which is found at the growing tip of the tube. Growth is stimulated by auxins, and the pollen tube is directed towards the ovary by certain chemicals. During growth of the pollen tube, the generative nucleus of the pollen divides by mitosis to produce two male nuclei, which are the male gametes. The pollen tube enters the ovule through the micropyle, the tube nucleus degenerates and the tip of the tube base releasing the male gametes near the embryo cell. One nucleus fuses with the female gamete forming a haploid zygote and the other fuses with the diploid nucleus forming a triploid nucleus known as the primary endosperm nucleus. This is called double fertilization and is unique to angiosperm. So in summary, double fertilization is the joining of a female gametophyte with two male gametes. One male nucleus fertilizes the egg cell, and the other nucleus combines with two polar nuclei of the megagametophyte. The haploid nuclei and the haploid egg combine to form a diploid zygote. The other sperm nucleus fuses with the other two haploid polar nuclei of the megagametophyte to form a triploid nucleus. This develops into an endosperm and is called the primary endosperm nucleus. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. If you have any questions, additions and subtractions, please write them in the comment section. If you have benefited from this video, please click the like button.